This video is not sponsored and has no adverts. Hello and thanks for joining me for some more landscape photography. In this video I'm going to be sharing what I got up to in Norway on days three and four. Uh, and then I'll be telling you my verdict on whether or not taking compact gear was the right decision for that particular trip. So day three was Sunday and we'd already had a couple of days of photography so we were pretty lazy on Sunday morning. Bit of a lie-in, bit of a leisurely breakfast. Uh, and some very local photography. And then I had a day being a tourist in the local town of Harstad, which is really interesting. Well, it's day three, Sunday morning, one of those sort of standard lazy days. Uh, we're pretty close to where Willie lives and he's brought me up to the head of the fjord, just where some little rivers feed into it in the hopes of spotting some salmon. Nothing doing today, unfortunately, but I've spotted what I think is quite a nice composition. This, is, this area is very much like the Lake District in the UK. So we don't have the jagged, spectacular mountains of Lofoten. But what we have is these beautiful birch trees, a boulder, some beautiful light, and a nine millimeter wide angle lens to capture it all. Very easy shot, actually, focusing. You can't miss focus with a nine millimeter lens. And I haven't used a nine millimeter very much while I've been here. Um, I've bracketed it, uh, shot at f6.3, 50th of a second. Pretty straightforward. I mean, there's no need for very much sort of creative camera work for this sort of shot. But what caught my eye was these lovely little leaves on the birch trees, but they're backlit. And that means I've, I'm shooting straight into the sun. So uh, I had to be careful with that, but I'm hopeful that this one will turn out. Now, quite apart from Willie being a fabulous host as a landscape photographer, he also doubles up as a professional tour guide. So when the cruise ships drop anchor at Harstadt, he takes groups of them around and tells them about the history of the area. And it's a very, very rich history. Of course, it goes back to Viking times. So he took me to the Viking Museum. He took me to the most northerly medieval church in Europe and also the tragic scene of a Russian prisoner of war camp from the German occupation of the Second World War. And the whole area is absolutely steeped in history, but you just can't help being constantly distracted by the surroundings when you're a landscape photographer. So even though I didn't do a huge amount of photography on the Sunday, I still took the opportunity to grab a few shots from some of the places that Willie was showing me around.
So it's my last day here in Norway. And what I wanted to do today, and Willie has very kindly agreed to help me out with it, I wanted to try and take home a definitive image that I can print and put on my wall that says, this is your reminder of your holiday in Norway. Now we're not down in the honey pots of Lofoten. We've come uh, along one of the arms of the fjord opposite where Willie lives in Borkenes. I'm looking kind of back towards that direction. So we're looking east here. And I've got a fabulous mountain ridge in front of me with the most amazing cloud formations over it and light draped across the peak. There's a hanging valley which every now and then catches some light. So I've parked myself on a rock and I've got it, my image framed with a couple of boulders and a couple of other boulders leading out into the lake. Uh, and I've got down really low. Why did I say lake? I keep saying lake, it's a fjord, it's, it's seawater. Um, I used that word earlier and corrected myself in a hurry. But I got down low because I want to compress the area of water. I've taken a series of images at 30 seconds with a 10 stop ND filter, smoothing out the seawater. It's got a really beautiful turquoise hue that uh, I really like and I want to bring that out in post. But what's really making this is the cloud formation. I've got a ring of dark grey ragged clouds across the top of this particular composition. And I'm just going to wait for the ferry to go straight through my composition, just shooting a bit of uh, video on my pen F so I can show you what I've just been banging on about. But the ferry is about to pile right through the middle of the composition. It doesn't matter. I've taken about 20 or so frames. I've got what I need for my final image. And to be honest, if this is the uh, best that I get today, I'd be more than happy. This is absolutely fabulous. I love my composition. I love the light, the mood, everything about it. So uh, yeah, we're planning a lot of stops back towards uh, Borkenes uh, around the fjord and on the island where we were a couple of days ago. So there may be some more opportunities, but today was all about trying to get a definitive image of this part of the world. Fabulous as it is, I want to do it justice. Willie is a very accomplished photographer, but what's really interesting is his approach and mine are completely different. He does everything handheld. He covers more ground than I do. Um, and yet he still seems to get some amazing images. So perhaps I should speed up a bit. We're right at the head of the fjord now. We're just about to head up into the forest. Interesting, I'm told that the conifers around here are invasive species. They've been introduced and uh, they're considered a pest. I just assumed that the whole of this part of the world was covered in conifers, but the, uh, the indigenous vegetation is mostly these scrubby looking uh, silver birches. So we're heading up to a waterfall, which will make a change and see what I can do with that. So it's actually a pretty simple uh, composition, this one. Nine millimeter, get the whole thing in. I might do something a little bit more considered in a moment, maybe pick out some detail, but I really wanted the whole thing to start with. Another thing is that up the top here, got this nice V shape. Now, it's often the way with waterfalls that you tend to cut out the sky altogether because it's a bit of an afterthought, there's just a little V at the very top. 
but I like the lines of trees up on that sort of horizon line. So I've deliberately kept it in and I've got a slightly wider section of sky. There's a bit of texture up there as well. So for this, I think it does add to it and I don't feel the need to cut it out particularly. I thought we were all done down the bottom and <laughs> Willie's brought me up above where we could previously see and there's a whole nother section of waterfall so I hadn't really anticipated that but uh, yeah, fabulous. So we're back on the coast now, come down from the forest and the waterfall. We scoped this out on our way uh, around the fjord because we've been all the way down the far end. But when we came by earlier, the tide was out and so decided to wait for it to come into this little creek and it looks much better now. What I'm doing with this shot is I've lined it up so that I've got the corner of this nice shed and this fabulous museum building. It's a pity it's not open because it'd be nice to go in. This used to be the village shop and they restored it. They had to raise it up, which is why it's on these piles. And what I really wanted to do was to reflect that. So I've got these two windows just uh, up to where the chimney stack is, I think. And I'm shooting this at about 25, 30 seconds. The clouds are moving quite slowly, so I'm not losing the texture in the sky. I've got some really nice light way down the bottom end of the fjord and this nice foreground. There's a lot of turquoise in the seawater, so by running the long exposure, I can pull that out in post. These little bits of vegetation in the foreground, of course, they're blowing around in the wind, so they're virtually invisible in my composition. Well, I really hope you got even a fraction of as much enjoyment out of these videos as I got out of making them. Obviously, way more photography than I would normally share with you on videos, but you know, you can't help boring people with your holiday snaps. And I have got a few more coming up at the end. But quickly before I finish, I did say that I would tell you my verdict on whether or not my decision to take my lightweight gear was the right one. So just a reminder, I took the Pen F with me. I took this 20 millimeter F1.4 prime lens from uh, OM system. And then my secondary lens, which uh, you was used quite a bit in the end, was this 35 to 100 uh, Lumix G F three and a half, or is it F4? Don't know. Oh no, it's F4 to 5.6. I was astounded at how well this lens performed. I must be honest, of course, I knew that the OM System Prime would work really well and the 9mm Lumix Leica that I'm talking to you on now. I didn't use that one quite so much. Uh, the waterfalls, I think, was the main use for it. Oh, and one shot on the coast. Anyway, um, I'm going to be frank. When I made the video before I went saying that I wasn't sure what to do, Actually, if I'd felt for one second that the Pen F couldn't cope with what I had in mind, I wouldn't have taken it. I was extremely confident that the choices of lenses 
and the camera would do the job perfectly well for me. Now, Willie very kindly had a great big box in the boot of his car full of Olympus gear just in case. Um, and after day one, we didn't take it out with us. I knew I wouldn't need it, but he did lend me a tripod. So that saved me some hassle at the airport. Anyway, I'm going to leave it there for this one. Thank you ever so much for joining me. Really hope you've enjoyed it. And if you have, why not subscribe and join me next time somewhere a bit more local.